want to welcome all you out there in Facebook land to Kol HaRua Messianic Fellowship, our Shabbat, our Shabbat teaching. Um, and also want to welcome everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbos. Shabbos. And uh, thanks for coming. And let's see what the Lord is going to do. Okay. Because I love it when he's in control. Amen. Uh, I'm not trying to give any negative thoughts here, but we enter the season of testing. Uh, it's a 40-day season. Does that sound familiar, 40 days of testing? <laughs> uh, at least it's not 40 years, thank goodness. Okay, but out of every year, it's called Bain Ham Sarim. <laughs> Actually, there's two parts of Bain Ham Sarim. The part that began on Monday evening, Tuesday, when the month turned to the first day of the fourth month, which which uh, the Jews call Tammuz. I don't particularly like the name Tammuz because it was worshipped as a false god. Right. Some of the names of the Jewish months were picked up in Babylon. Okay, and so and the Bible doesn't say anything about the fourth month having a name. So we just call it the fourth month. But also it's the same way. You know, we're all used to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But most of those come from pagan gods. Right. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, in the ancient times, it, it was the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, and the Sabbath. It wasn't even called the Sabbath day, it was called the Sabbath. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> that's what made it so unique. It didn't have a time period. When God created the heavens and the earth, he assigned a, an evening and morning to each day. But on the Sabbath, he didn't assign an evening and morning. He sanctified it. He set it apart. So it's like a, an eternal day that has no time. Wow. It's like heaven and earth are together wow. on, on this day. So that's why there's an opening in the heavens on this day. It's not like any other day. Now you can worship the Lord and you can encounter the Lord any day of the week. But God gave this day for the most auspicious encounter with him. Wow. So, awesome. just tell me, that's just what the word says. Okay, so, you know what, as time goes on, God is wanting a people that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And I really believe we're going to come to that. But we, we have to get over, there's a lot of people that have doctrinal issues. And God's not about doctrine. Okay, he's about a relationship. He's about, it says, Yeshua told us, the woman at the well, remember, those who want to worship the word must worship in spirit and in truth. Did he say you have to believe in the baptism? Or you have to believe, you have to believe in the Pentecostals? Or, you know, you have to be part of the Lutherans? Okay, no, you know. It, it's to worship in spirit and truth. Because... <coughs> The woman of the well said, we, we know that they say that you're supposed to worship in Jerusalem. And it was in that answer that Yeshua said, the worshipers that the Father wants are those who worship him in spirit and in truth. It's not going to be here or there. It's not going to be in this denomination or that denomination. You could be in one denomination or another, but if you're not worshiping in spirit and in truth, it doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, that's not what God intended. God wants us to worship in spirit and in truth. You are the church. You are the Kehillah, the congregation. It, you are the ones that are it. It's not a building. Oh, of course, it's nice to have a building. And I'm very thankful that we have a place to meet in. And I'm very thankful for the church that allows us to meet here. Okay? But it's like we are the people of God. Yes. We are yes. the congregation of God. Each yes. of us. Amen. When we come together, we're here to exhort one another, to build each other up. Amen. Not tear down. Amen. The problem is, we have these large congregations, and people like to gossip because they know they're never, they're never going to face the person they're, they're gossiping about. Or maybe they will and act one way and continue to do evil. God doesn't want us talking about each other. We are all such a mess. And if you don't see yourself as a mess, then you're in serious trouble. <laughs> because Yeshua said that if you don't see yourself as sick, then your sickness remains. 
He said that to a Pharisee, I think. Yes, he said that to a couple of them, actually. Yeah. It's the ones that know that they are a mess that God can work with. Because God is, God is a repairer. He is a restorer. Okay. So we, in order for us to be repaired and restored, we have to acknowledge that we need to be repaired and restored. So this time of being how serene, it might seem kind of like, oh my God, you know, all this is happening. There's a demon that comes out, and, and i got to watch how I drive. <coughs> All these different things about Bain Hamsarim. Bain Hamsarim means, by the way, between the straights. You know what's between the straights? The narrow path. Basically, this whole period is the period of the narrow path. Yeshua said, strive, struggle to enter the narrow path. And it says that in that path is where he is. But many choose the wide and the easy path that leads to destruction. Oh, I caught my bell. These things are just not made to hold a Bible that's heavy. Okay, so I'm not going to go over everything about the Bain Home Serene today. Um, Bein Ham Sorin, if we were to break it down, it means, uh, well, I said between the straits, and it, and it comes from Lamentations 1 3, where actually in Lamentations 1 3, okay, I gotta go back to the Bible here, okay. <clears throat> it's right after Jeremiah. It says, Judah has gone into exile under affliction and under harsh servitude. She dwells among the nations, and she has found no rest. All her pursuers have overtaken her in the midst of distress. Okay, now, in some versions, it says in dire straits. That's where the band got their name. Okay, the name of that band they call dire straits means Ben Hamsarim. In Hebrew, it means between the troubles, between the distress. Okay, so now there's two opinions on this. There's a rabbi that says, and this is in the Mishnah, which is a, uh, called the Oral Law or the commentary on how to do Judaism based on the Torah. Okay, the rabbi, rabbinic commentaries. It's been kept so that we wouldn't forget how to do the temple service, how to do all the things that's in the scriptures. Okay, and, and it's been kept in the form of a book called the, 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 uh, the Chumash. Uh, is that right? Yeah, Chumash. Okay, so, uh, the one rabbi's opinion is it begins with the first day of the fourth month and ends with the ninth of Av, which, by the way, next month on the Jewish calendar is the month of Av. The, the first day of the fourth month was uh, Monday evening, Tuesday, okay, of this past, of this, this week. <clears throat> During a season, okay, it represents, it's a representation every year of what happened that I talked about last week, Shalach Lacha. When the spies, remember, they spied out the land and Tedavim gave a bad report and the people believed the bad report and they were sentenced. And this is way after they toured the land and they began their tour on the first day of the fourth month and ended on the ninth of Av. And because they were, because the people believed the bad report, they ended up having to wander in the wilderness a, a day for a year. For each day they toured the land, it was a year. So they wandered for 40 years because they could not believe in faith in God's promise. Okay, so we have this period of time that's almost like a curse out of every year. However, that's for people who don't have faith. It's a curse to them. But for those who do have faith, it's a blessing. Like Joshua and Kadesh, who two, two of them came back with a good report. So, so we are blessed and there's a double blessing and a triple blessing. And a great blessing. Okay, great, a great blessing.
blessing for those who walk by faith. Okay, so um, between the troubles, okay, what troubles? There's another opinion. There is a, a what's called a fast day of the fourth month, which is the seventeenth day of the fourth month. I'm just going to quickly go over this. Okay, seventeenth day is is the day that Moses came down from Mount Sinai the first time and he saw a golden calf. Okay, and and then that so that was also another bad, really bad day, and a lot of uh, a lot of people died. Three thousand potato too. Three thousand. Israelis died as a result of that. Okay, um, and then the ninth of Av was when they, when they were sentenced to wander in the wilderness for forty years. Israel, all those age twenty and over, because they wouldn't believe God. Okay, so um, now what? How does that affect us today? Well. There's a lot of there's a lot of ways it affects us today. It, it's it's a curse in time and it's connected to the land. So we, for us, we're blessed. So what are we should be what should we be doing? We should be praying for those that are, are not. They're not born again. We should be praying for those who have no faith. Because there's a great danger to them during this time. Because for those 40 years, a day for a year, uh, all, all those Israelis from the age of 20 and up, they died in the wilderness. There's death in the air during this season for the, for the unbelievers. Okay, so this should be a time to win souls. We should be out there talking to people, telling people. And especially if they're going through a hard time. And, and to explain to them why they're going through a hard time. Okay, for 40 days. Troubles, distress. Okay? And on the ninth day, even worse events happen. Well, this is a day that God presented. God told Israel you're going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. But you know what else happened on that day? The first temple was destroyed. And the second temple was destroyed. And the Spanish Inquisition started in the, on that time. And the emptying of the Warsaw Ghetto. It happened on that time in Poland. And, you know, a number of other events happened. Horrible events have happened in Israel. So we need to pray especially for Israel. And look what's happening this coming week. The Israel is annexing the central part of, of uh, Israel, which belongs to them anyhow. They have a right to it. But there's going to be a lot of stress. And you watch. There's going to be a lot of pressure put on from the nations that's already started, okay, from the UN and others. It's, it's all connected to the land. Remember, the promise was a land, an inheritance. So you can't touch that during this time. And any nation that messes with that land or tries to manipulate Israel in it is going to be cut to pieces. They're going to have a lot of problems. Now, I believe that our president and this nation is in support of this, of the land. But we're going to see there's supposed to be a meeting this coming week. So it, it, it's amazing. But God is doing this. He, this they will put, pick this time to do this. This time. But Israel is, is in the right right now regarding annexing their land. Okay? So, you know, there shouldn't be any problem there. But keep praying for Israel. The enemy wants to make them unhappy, make them sad, increase the COVID that's been going on, even in Israel, as well as this country. Okay, so, so keep praying for Israel this coming week. Really pray, especially. Okay, and whatever you do, uh, pray for anybody who makes a wrong decision regarding Israel, because there's going to be trouble in their lives. This is a time where you do not touch Israel or that land. There's a great danger to any soul who does that. Even if a person is walking positive with the Lord and is believing in faith, if they touch that land in the wrong way, with the wrong thoughts, with the wrong understanding, and if they touch the people of Israel, there's a great danger during this time toward them as well. Okay, and I'm not going to say anything more about that today. Next week we'll talk about the fasts and, and all the events that happen. 
even recent events, very recent events, in 2014, that war with Gaza, that God did miracles for Israel during that war, that occurred during this entire time period. Okay, so, anyhow, what I want to talk about today, this week's Torah portion, Korach, the same as the Torah portion. Oh, yes, I've been reminded I have to do the blessing, and, and it's very right, I need to do the blessing. So let's do the blessing before we read the Torah. Baruch Hu et Jehovah HaMorach, Baruch Yehovah HaMorach Le'lam Va'ed, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachar Bani Mikor HaAmin Ve'na'atam Lanu Et Torato, Baruch Atah Adonai Nutin HaTorah, Amen. Blessed are you, blessed is the Lord, blessed one, and blessed is the Lord, blessed one, all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all people to give us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. So we read now Korach. Okay, it, it's 12 pages, but don't worry, I'm not going to take an hour or two. Okay? Or I could, if you want. Yeah, sure. Yes. <laughs> Lunch. <laughs> we don't need lunch, right? <laughs> lunch, what is lunch? <laughs> this is food, man. We're eating right now. This is meat. Yes. It's not salted from number 16 to numbers 1832 or Bethany <coughs> Okay. We start off with the rebellion, the rebellion of Korah, and we might not get any further than that. Okay. Uh, so let's look at chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Separate himself, did Korach. That's his name, by the way. I know it says in your Bible, it's Korach. But in Hebrew, the word is Korach. That's a kuf, a resh, and a... Achet. Separate himself to Korach, son of Yitzhar. Yit, actually, it's Yitzh, Yitzhar. Try to say that fast. Yitzhar. Uh, son of Yitzhar, son of Kohat, son of Levi, with Atan and Abiram, sons of Eliab, and On, son of Peleg, the son of Reuben, or Reuben. Okay, so separate himself to Korah. Let's see what they did. They stood before Moshe with men from the children of Israel, 50 and 200, or 250 leaders of the assembly, who those summoned for meeting, men are renowned. They gathered together against Moses and against Aaron, and they said to them, it is too much for you, for the entire assembly. They are all holy. And in their midst is God. So why do you raise yourself over the congregation of God? In other words, here they are, the Levites. And here's Korach. And he says, you think you're great, Moses and Aaron? You're nothing. We're all holy. He raised himself over. And it says, very interesting here. He said, he raised themselves up against Moses and against Aaron. Now pay attention to this. These are the two witnesses. Okay. <clears throat> Separate himself. The word is to lay hold of, to seize. You know what that means to seize? When it says he separated himself, his intention was to seize the kingdom. Korah was going to seize the kingdom from Moses and, and Aaron. Okay? Isn't it interesting? His name means bald. It, it, for Korah, you know, on page one of your notes, his name means bald, to make bald. Okay? Now, hair in the Bible is always a picture of the Jewish people, okay? And it's from Ezekiel, 
But God told Ezekiel to cut a third of his hair and to chase after it with the sword and a bunch of other things. Uh, and he might sound, that sounds kind of weird, but you know, he told the prophets to do strange things to get a message to Israel. Okay? But hair represents Israel and the Jews. So him being bald, it's like you could say he's not representing Israel. He's not representing the God of Israel. So who is he representing? But his he was the son of someone that means shining oil. And also who was the son of a person that means the assembly or the gathering. So far they're good, right? And he's the son of Levi, which means to be joined to. Levites were supposed to be joined to the priest to help them. And with Daltan, belonging to a mountain, and Abiram, these are the other ones with him that rebelled with him. That doesn't sound bad, right? And, and Abiram, which means my father is exalted. Well, our father in heaven is exalted, right? That doesn't sound bad either. Sons of Eliab, which means my God is father. Okay, doesn't say anything wrong with that, does it, right? And, and On, also this guy named On, O-N, rebelled, and his name means wealth or vigor, okay? He was the son of a guy that means swiftness, who was the son of a guy that means to see spiritually a son. None of that sounds bad, does it? He says, why do you raise yourselves over the congregation of Yehovah. In other words, he said this to Moses and Aaron. What makes you think you should be in charge? Maybe it's because God said for Moses and Aaron to do it. And there's a reason. Korach was trying to seize the priesthood. It wasn't enough to, to be able to serve God and carry the things of God. They were carrying the tabernacle around. They were closer to God than, Aaron, than all of us in Israel. But it wasn't enough. They wanted it all. And, they, and all their names seem so good. Okay? Moshe and Aaron were accused of something that's opposite of who they are. Like they were seizing it. They were controlled. They were being accused of seizing the kingdom for themselves. Now, remember how it says in the scriptures, do not touch mine anointing. David would not touch King Saul, although King Saul was obviously in the wrong, possessed by demons. And, all, and, and other things. The first king, after he rebelled against God, he, his kingship was removed, but he was still king. David said, I will not kill, I will not hurt the Lord's anointed, because he is God's anointed while he remains king. David's kingship would come when King Saul was gone, when he was, when he was dead. So he did that, but he was running from King Saul because King Saul knew that David would be king and wanted to stop him. David. So it's the same way here. Moshe and Aharon are God's anointed. And they were not seeking it. God was putting them there in charge. And Korah said, we're all anointed like you. We can do the same thing. And they weren't realizing that they were coming against God and Aaron. You see, Moses and Aaron were symbolic of God and the prophets. Moses and Aaron were symbolic of God and his Messiah. Okay? Moshe was the most humble man on earth in this time. We're on page three. Korah became a type and shadow of the Antichrist, the false Messiah. By putting Moshe and Aaron down. Let's look at Psalm chapter two. We talked about that earlier. You know, one of the big things we have to understand, and I've had to learn this too, we might not like the leader of a church or a congregation or a synagogue or, you know, if they have these problems in mosques or anything like that, okay? The leader, you know, we might not like them, but you can't come against their authority because it was given to them by God. Okay, so... There's a great danger to your soul. When, when you do that, you become like a false messiah. Even if you think you know better, 
than what they teach. You know, a lot, there are a lot of places that say, I know more than that person who's leading. But they're the leader over that congregation. And God is the only one that can, can convince them of anything. He can, we can testify, and hopefully they will hear it, and then maybe they won't. That's up to God to seal it in their soul. Okay, the truth. Okay, God raises up people to be leaders. And we have to recognize those authorities, whether we like them or not. There's a lot of people I don't like, but I recognize they're an authority. Yes. Okay, so Psalm chapter 2. I love that, that song, Praise the Lord, by uh, his name. So, don't right. miss so, it's an old song, but it's anointed. <laughs> Why, Psalm 2, Why are the nations in an uproar, and the peoples devising a vain thing? The kings of the earth take their stand, and rulers take, down, take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed. That is Jehovah and his Messiah. That is Moses and Aaron. Let us tear their fetters apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord scoffs at them, and he will speak to them in his anger and terrify them in his fury. But as for me, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain, and I will surely tell of the decree of Jehovah. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will surely give the nations as your inheritance, and the, the very ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and shall shatter them like earthenware. Now therefore, O kings, show discernment, take warning, O judges of the earth, worship the Lord with reverence, and rejoice with trembling. Do homage to the sun, lest he become angry, and he perish in the way. For his wrath may soon be kindled. How blessed are all who take refuge in him. Okay. And then look at um, what happened. I lost my notes. Jude one, the book of Jude. That's all the way at the end, right before Revelation. like one chapter, okay, and they call it a book. Okay. Jude, the bond servant of Messiah Yeshua, the brother of James, to, to those who are called beloved in God the Father and kept and for Messiah Yeshua. May mercy and peace and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was making every effort to write to you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith which was once in for all delivered to the to the believers, the saints. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed. Those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. Now I desire to remind you, though you know all things once for all, that the Lord, after saving his people out of the land of Egypt, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe, and angels who did not keep their own domain, but abandoned their proper abode. He has kept in eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and cities around them, since they, in the same way as these, indulged in gross immorality and went after strange flesh, and are exhibited as an example in undergoing the correction of eternal fire. Yet in the same manner, these men also by dreaming defile the flesh, reject authority, and revile angelic majesties. But Michael the archangel, when he disputed with the devil and argued over the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce against him a railing judgment, but said, Jehovah rebuked you. But these men revile the things which they do not understand and the things which they know by instinct, like unreasoning animals, 
By these things they are destroyed. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain, and for pay they have rushed headlong into the era of Bilam, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. Okay, so it's telling us the nature of these people in, that, in the book of Jude. So we must be careful to lift up those who are the true leaders and take authority against those who lift themselves up like Korach with arrogance and pride. And these men sought to usurp the authority of Moses and Aharon. Name of Korach. It means without Torah, without the ways of Elohim. And I, I also sh I share with you how the hair represents Israel and the Jews. It also represents Torah. And God's spiritual covering over our lives, the ways and paths of God. And that's in Ezekiel 5, 1 to 17. Okay, and I'm not going to cover all these things that I, I just covered. Okay, never should we think of ourselves as anything. They accused Moses and Aaron of exalting themselves over the congregation of trying to do this. By their names, we see something as well. Now, do you remember how I just went over the names and they all seemed okay? Satan, does he not come as an angel of light? Yes. yes. He comes as so nice. Illuminati. And like everything's so perfect, I'm going to give you a gift. Oh, I'm going to bring peace to the earth. Remember, there's a scripture to say when they say peace and safety, the sun and destruction of the father. They come so beautiful. They come like they're from God, but they're not. And we have to be careful. And people bearing good gifts, people saying, I, I want what you want. I, want. I want to be a part of it. It says also in the book of Daniel that in the end, that, that people were going to come out of curiosity. And I can't think of the word right off hand right now. But they're going to come in and kind of spy us out, check us out, and want to know the power that we have. Okay? It's going to come. People are going to slip in. And they're going to come as, as deceivers to take people away. Okay? And to take it into a false way that seems right. Okay, how is the false Messiah going to deceive the world through signs and wonders? Man made signs and wonders. And signs and wonders, demonic signs and wonders. Demonically made signs and wonders. But if we are not grounded in the Torah, like Moses and Aharon, we will be taken away. And we know what happens <laughs> to Moses. And I'm sorry, we know what happens to Korah and his company, all those that are with him. The ground is going to open up and swallow them alive into hell, into the pit. They were the only ones that I know of that went alive into the pit. Okay? When we don't believe in the Lord and we're not saved, we go, we die and our, and our soul goes into the pit. But when these guys were alive, so I guess they died on their way down Okay, but the, still, they went alive into the pit. That's the seriousness of rebellion against the people that God sets up. And rebellion against the truth that God's setting up. His word is truth. Yeshua said that your word is truth. He spoke to the Father and he said, your word is truth. May they be one as we are one. Instead, people go about and they, and they go about attacking what they don't know, what they don't understand. They don't know what they do. Yeshua said that. He's, you know what? It got dark, remember? The whole world got dark for three hours. It wasn't a thunderstorm. I, I've seen in all the movies there's a thunderstorm or, you know, they don't show that it was darkness that was not normal. Okay? It caused everybody to be afraid. They all went to their house when that happened, except the few that were there. And he was left alone, and even you know, he, he cries out to the Lord, because he knew you were touching something so close to the Father, his very son. He was getting destroyed. I mean, all of us, for all of our sins, they were touching Yeshua, the love of heaven, 
the word of God. And God was not wanting to hold back. He was wanting to destroy it all. He, could, he couldn't hold back until Yeshua said, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. And that mercy of Yeshua while he was suffering on the cross held back God, pouring out his wrath on the entire planet, maybe destroying the whole thing. We can see over and over again that God wanted to destroy Israel when they rebelled against him. But he, he didn't because there was an interceder. Uh, I don't know if that's the right way to say intercede. Someone to intercede. It was Yeshua who interceded to stop the Father from destroying the earth at that moment. And it was Moses who interceded when God wanted to destroy all the people. And he said, do you want everybody, you want to eat the Egyptians and all the people to say you got them, you took them out of Egypt with a mighty hand so that you could destroy them in the wilderness? You weren't able to get them to the place that you promised them? It's going to really mess up your name. They're not going to have any respect for you. This is my paraphrased version. But that's pretty much what, that's pretty much what um, Moses was saying to God. And God said, okay. <laughs> he changed his mind. And he did that at least three times there. I think it was three times. But there was still a result of rebelling against the Lord. It, it was death. It was a plague. First, the ground opened up. Okay? And swallowed them alive. Okay? Um, okay, so God wants us, he wants us on this narrow path to follow him and believe in him. So destruction doesn't come our way. But everybody else wants to be on the wide path of destruction. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the Torah. You would think that after all that happened in the previous week, when all the people died, I think it was like 17,000 people died in a plague from last week's portion. Unless I'm getting this week's portion confused with last week's. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, I, all I know is that there was a plague that went out. Okay. Um, I might be getting a little ahead of myself. Okay, I already explained to you what authority is. By the way, you know the literal the bottom of page three, the word for authority is the word God. You see this? This is a pointer. Yeah. We don't touch yeah. the Torah. We use this to point to the word. It's called the Yad. Okay. That is the authority. That's the same word for authority. When God sets up an authority, they are the one that's going to point you to the word of God. If they're not doing that, then they're in trouble between them and God. Because it says in, in Ezekiel 34, God's going to judge the sheep for feeding themselves and not feeding the flock. But God is going to judge them. Okay? We don't go into their congregation and judge them. There are going to be people in the future, you know, uh, I'm hoping, you know, that it doesn't happen, but it's possible it will happen because it happens to everyone. They're going to come in here and think that they know better, okay? But uh, hopefully you will remember this and you will say, oh, he's coming against the authority. Oh, she's coming against the authority. You know, you know they'll, they'll know. And you guys will say, no, we're not listening to you. <laughs> and you can deal with them. But you know what, whatever makes you know, hopefully we'll have more people that will be able to stand against them, elders and leaders that we'll, we'll be able to raise up to stand and watch out for the sheep. There are wolves that come in. Oh, yeah. okay? And they think they know, they know better. They're Korah. They have that spirit. It could be Jezebel. It could be a number of other things. But they operate to stop the leadership and to stop the music. Okay? Uh, but... The goal is that I have to be leading you to that word. But who is that word to? That's Yeshua. So I'm leading to you to Yeshua in the Torah. Yeah. So I'm I'm a 
saying that it was perfect that it happened. I'm just saying that it's amazing that it's the tongue. We have to be very careful uh, about speaking against authorities, you know. Uh, I had a real hard time recognizing our last president, okay. And we're supposed to pray, even though he was the authority. We're supposed to pray for those. And I had a real hard time with that. Uh, it's hard to respect someone who's, who's leading your country into evil, okay. But if we just keep our mouth shut, and, and we don't attack those people, we'll be okay. We can personally not like them or not want them, but we just can't attack them to other people. And uh, we might not like half the people and, you know, that are up there in authority you know, in Washington, D.C., but we have to be careful because they were raised up uh, for, for those authorities. Now, if we're in Texas, okay, if they're a leader from California, I don't have a problem saying anything because really it's not. But if I'm in California, I won't say anything against them. <laughs> they're a leadership. Okay, they, we put that leader in. Okay, you have to respect the leaders that God places in there that we're under, unfortunately, if, even if they're a bad leader. But we can pray and we can make sure that the good ones get in there. Okay? Yeah. You know, the rabbi had also says in Proverbs, you know, we must fear the Lord. But to fear the Lord means to hate evil. That's right. Well, we still hate the evil. We have but to hate evil. We just can't speak publicly against those people. Okay. But I'll leave that in your hands. I mean, maybe I'm, I'm not right in, in what I'm saying here. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> all I know is that we have to be very careful. Okay. When we speak against authorities that God has set up. And there's a lot going on. In, in many ways, there's a lot of Clorox raising up their voice against the president who God has put in there. Okay? So they're in trouble. Everyone is in trouble who, who messes with what God has set up. Okay. Um, authority. Okay? The authority structure is set up by God. Okay? And I, I don't want, really want to go into it. Uh, God told, now this is the part, chapter 16, verses 6 to 11. So let's look at 16, 6 to 11. This, this is what, okay, after all this, this is what he says. Um, verse 4, okay, so we finished up to verse 3. Now listen to what it says in verse 4 of chapter 16. Moses heard and fell on his face when all this happened. He spoke to Christ. You know why? Moses feared God and knew God was already frustrated with his people. And now they're doing something really bad. So what is he going to do? He's going to destroy them again. So he said he fell on his face and he started, he started praying on their behalf. He spoke to Korah and to the entire assembly saying, In the morning, Jehovah will make himself, him, will make known the one who is his own and the Holy One, and he will draw him close to himself. And whomever he will choose in him, he will draw close to himself. Now this is the key. The one, the leader that God raises up is the one that God draws close to him. That that person draws close to God. Think about that. It says it right here. He spoke to Korah and to his entire assembly, saying, In the morning, God, Jehovah, will make known the one who is his and the Holy One. He will draw close to himself. Whomever he will choose in him, he will draw close to him. Remember how Yeshua said that no one could come to me unless they're drawn by the Father? Is it, that's, that's what Yeshua was quoting right here. God draws those close to him that are his, and he raises up, he'll use who he wants to use. Moshe fought with God at first and said, I don't want to do this. I'm, a, I'm just a shepherd. I'm not going to be your shepherd. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to talk to Pharaoh. You know, and, and he says, well, that's why I want you to go, because you don't think you can do it. I'm going to do it through you. Okay. God is going to use what everybody thinks is not qualified. God qualifies. Because of our relationship to him. He says, I want to use that person because 
they know they, they don't have it in them that I can I can get the glory out of it. They can't get the glory. If this tribe, if there's you know you're motivated, oh yeah, you picked me. That's great. I know exactly what the saints do. You know, God wants the people that they can be used as His mouthpiece. Okay, not who think that they know. Who are humble, broken, and contrite. He's close to a broken and contrite person. He will use all of us in this room if we stay small. If we if we don't have any pride. Moses, the most humble man on in the earth at that time. He said, That's the man I want. The man who has nothing in him. Who only wants me. Who only wants to do my will. This you should do. Take for yourselves fire pans, Korach, and all its assembly, and put in them fire, and place upon them incense before Yehovah tomorrow. And then it will be that the man whom Yehovah will choose, he is the Holy One. Is it too much for you, O offspring of Levi? Moshe said to Korach, Hear now, O offspring of Levi, is it a small thing for you that he has separated the God of Israel has separated you from the assembly of Israel to bring you near to him to perform the service of the tabernacle of Jehovah and to stand before the assembly to minister to them. And he brought you near all your brethren, the sons of Levi, with you. Yet you seek also the priesthood. Therefore you and all your assembly that are joining together are joining together against Jehovah and against Aaron. And what is he that you should protest against him? Isn't it interesting? He doesn't say Moses and Aaron. He says against Jehovah and against Aaron. Meaning that Aaron, it's like Jehovah, that's the word. I mean, that's, that's God. That is the Father. And Aaron, who is the mouthpiece. Remember, Moses didn't want to speak. So God brought his brother to him. And Aaron spoke. And it says in the Torah, in the Hebrew, you will be like Elohim. You will be like God, Moses. And Aaron will be like a prophet. <laughs> so basically, there is Aaron and the, there is God and the prophet, or God and his son. The word of God is the spirit of prophecy. Yeshua is the word of God. The word of the prophets represent Yeshua, the word of God. Okay, so the anointed one. So Aaron is the anointed one. And what is it that you protest against him? Moses, Moshe sent to call the Datan and Adoram to the sons of Eliab, and, and they said, we shall not go up. Is it a small thing? Now, they're coming back at Moses and they're saying, is it a small thing that you have brought us up from the land flowing with milk and honey to put us to death in the wilderness, yet you seek to dominate us even further? Look at this. They're blaspheming God. They're they're saying that Moses did this and it was God. So they're putting God down and they're saying, you did this to us. And you want to dominate us even further. They have no respect or fear of God. So he's going to have to show them. So he, he has them all take censors. Uh, first he pleads with God and God says, I'm going to destroy them. And he says, okay, you know, this is what we're going to do. Uh, verse 16, Moses said to Korah, you and all your assembly be before Yehovah, you and they and Aaron tomorrow. Let each man take his fire pan and you shall place on them incense and you shall bring before Yehovah each man his fire pan. 50, 250 fire pans. 250 people. And you and Aaron, each man with his fire pan. So they took each man his fire pan and they placed on them fire and they placed on them incense. Now, I share with you before, incense at the incense altar, they put fire on it and they put incense and it represents our prayers. Okay? Huh? It also represents our heart. Yes, it represents our heart because our prayers come from our heart. So each man is like a golden uh, incense. A, a, a golden altar of incense. And he's going, they're all going to bring their fire. And what happened when two people came in, the sons of, uh, of Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu? Okay. 
They came in and they offered incense and God didn't tell them to do it. Something was wrong in their hearts. And what happened? They got burned to a crisp from the inside. Okay? He's going to do the same thing. They're offering a fire up, 250 pants, and if their heart is wrong, they're going to get burned. And that's what happened. Okay, so 250 fire pants. Uh, and with this fire pan, okay? And, and then... Yehovah spoke to Moshe and to Aaron, and they said, separate yourselves from the midst of the assembly, and I shall destroy them in an instant. Then Moshe and Aaron fell on their faces and said, O oh God, God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and with all of the assembly will you be angry? And Yehovah spoke to Moshe, saying, speak to the assembly, saying, get yourselves away from around the dwelling place of Korah, Datan, and Abiram. Moshe got up and went to Datan and Abiram, and, and they went after them. The elders of Israel did, and he spoke to the assembly, saying, Turn away now from near the tents of the men that are wicked, these ones, and do not touch anything that is theirs, lest you perish because of their sins. So they got themselves away from near the dwelling place of Korah, Datan, Abiram, on all sides. And Datan and Abiram went out erect in the, at the entrance of their tents with their wives and their children, and their infants. And Moshe said, through, the, through this shall you know that Yehovah has sent me to perform all these acts, that it was not from my heart. Did you hear that? It was like, it was not from mine. It was God. It was God's heart that was in me. If like the death of all men will these die, the common fate of all men is visited upon them, then it is not Yehovah who has sent me. But if a, a strange thing happens, a phenomenon Yehovah creates and opens does the ground its mouth and swallows them and all that is theirs, and they will descend alive to Sheol, which is the pit or death, then you shall know that provoked have these men Yehovah. They provoked him. And it was that when he finished speaking all these words, split open to the ground that was under them, opened to the earth its mouth and swallowed them and their households and all the people who were with Korah and all their wealth, they descended, they and all that was theirs, alive into Sheol, into the pit, and cover over them to the earth, and they were lost. And from the midst of the congregation, all Israel that was around them fled at their sound, for they said, let's swallow up will the earth. A fire went out, but a fire went out from Jehovah and consumed the 250 men who were offering the incense. Now why did God do this? He was trying to teach them. You rebel against God, and, and you think you know better. Okay, let's see. Let me see your heart. You offer incense to me, just like those two did. Uh, Nadav and Abihu, the sons of Aaron. You offer and see if, if it's pleasing to the Lord. If your heart is pleasing. He sees the heart. He never looks at this outward appearance. I don't care what color we are. I don't care what sex we are. He never looks at the outward appearance. He looks at the heart, the motivations of the heart. And that incense that everybody carried, it became an incense altar. And their hearts were wrong. So they all got burned up, just like Nadav and Abihu. And God told Aaron to go collect the censers, and they, and they basically hammered them out. Okay, now, this is really cool. The, the censers, the fire pans, they hammered them out into grates that would go on top of the altar of sacrifice. In other words, you'll put the, 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 the remainder uh, of these fire pans onto the altar, and you'll put the sacrifice on the altar. And you may say, well, what does that mean? Hammered out means broken. Okay, in other words, now, what? These were holy. The Levites, they were owned by the Levites. They were, they were holy items used in worship, in praise. And they were holy items used uh, as a part of you know, offering up to God okay, to be used in, in the tabernacle. Okay? So he said, let's, okay, their hearts were wrong, but let's press them down. Let's uh, actually, let me find the spot, okay, where I actually talk about, talk about that. Okay, the word incense, by the way, is ketoret. Okay, but it's, incense is actually a sacrifice. Okay, so actually I think I need to go further down. 
to find it. Okay, so to find that the actual word that was used. Maybe I didn't put it in there. Okay, uh, it looks like I didn't put it in there. But the word that was used for these fire pans to pan when they were hammered out. The Hebrew word for hammering out has to do with um, basically being broken. The meaning of it. I, I thought I had it in there. But I can't seem to find it. I don't have, a, I don't have the, the Hebrew word in my notes. I don't know why I didn't put it there. But uh, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, so God had to, if our hearts are not right when we're, when we're praying, okay, it could be very bad for us. We have to watch what we pray if our hearts are not right. If we're angry against someone that has mistreated us and we pray against them, it's dangerous. Because it's going up to God and it's unholy. And it's going to burn us up. I not, not necessarily physically, but it's going to hurt us. We have to watch it. We pray right. Okay? That we're not praying wrong. Okay? And these things are going to be used for our proper sacrifice. They had been used wrong. But now they're going to be hammered out and broken. Literally, the, the fire pans are going to be hammered into something that was going to be used for sacrifice. It's on the altar of God, on the altar of sacrifice. Because it's going to be made pure because they were all burnt up. See, the, not only was the incense burned, but the people were. All 250 of them. Okay? After that, they still complained. Okay? The next day, they say, you're killing us all. Now, God already said in last week's portion, you're going to die in the next 40 years. Everybody from the age of 20 and up. Okay? So it's just falling right along with that. You keep rebelling against me, you're going to die faster. Okay? So that, that's basically what was happening. Okay? That they, they complained the next day, and God sent a plague in 17,000 were killed. I believe I have that written down. Okay, there it is. I found it. I found the word for hammered out. It's on page eight. It's the word raka. Raki, raki, it actually means expansion. You remember when God created the expanse in the book of Genesis? Okay, there was an expanse. It's very similar word to it. It means to beat, to stamp, to beat out, to spread out. Okay, he had to beat down. Remember, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. But if you don't, you're coming down. Okay. <laughs> Even though it's all these 250 people with, with the census, or also they were called fire pants, were destroyed, and they had to have their censers beaten down into something that could be used on the altar. So when we make a sacrifice, which means the breaking, the sacrifices is the breaking of an animal, is the destruction of an animal. Yes? Isn't Raka the same word that Yeshua spoke of um, concerning a brother? He who speaks Raka to his brother. Well, I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure if that's the same meaning. Uh, and it might be something else. But that's something I'll look into. Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, right after that, is when uh, there was a plague that went out when the people complained the next day, 14,700 people died. Okay, now why am I bringing this up? Listen, there is no room for pride in us. I, I know you might have heard that it's okay to be prideful in your abilities and prideful in, in your life. The, the word pride is sin itself. It's leaven, okay? If we're going to be proud of anything, be proud of what God is doing in us Amen. and through us. Be, be, give God the praise. Give God the glory. Give God the pride. Meaning that he gets all the glory for it. Whenever God does something good for you, give him the glory. Or someone says, oh, you are so great. I want to bow down to you. And it's like, hey, no. what you do is you've got to say, no, I'm a human. I'm dust. I'm the grass that withers the flower that fades. God gets the glory. Amen. He gets it for what Amen. he's doing. 
through me for you. Okay? He gets it, not me. I'm not, I'm not going to get any praise because I played well or because I did what's right. Okay? It's got to be him. Because the moment a little bit of pride comes in, it's deadly. It spreads like cancer. And, and, it's, and I, I'm afraid of it. When someone gives me praise, I'm afraid of it. I want them to give God the glory so that he gets it. And when the kingdom comes, you know, he'll say, oh, what, look at what I did. All this was built up on, on the glory that I got out of your life, that you submitted to. It's the same thing for all of you. When it's okay to feel good about doing something for the Lord, but just know that, that he gave you that ability to do something good for him. He placed that in you. And I, I, I don't know if, 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 I, if I, I can fully uh, really get this across. I think you're understanding me, okay? Because we all in this world strive for praise from people. We're always seeking approval from others. And it, it's like we can't, it, it's like we, we shouldn't be seeking that. We're also, <laughs> I want his approval. You know, that, he, that I'm doing right by the Lord. And that's what we should all be seeking. And, you know, this whole, really, this whole Antichrist thing at the end is going to come about being pride. Mm -hmm. Satan always wanted the throne of God. Mm -hmm. He wanted to push God out of the way. The one who created him. You know, it's like God gives us our cars. He gives us our houses. Give praise to him for giving that to us. Even if we pay for it. He gave us the money to pay for it. So that's really what the, the message we can get out of it. Because, because he gets the glory. He swore. He told Moses, I swear by my own name. The glory of the Lord will fill the earth. It will fill the earth. Okay? God's going to have the glory over the earth. He will rule with a rod of iron. No one will come against him. They might act like they do, but he's laughing. He's scoffing at them. And one day he's going to pour out his wrath on the earth. And right now, they'll tell you, why would a good God do that? You know what? The thing is, he has a day that he's going to do it. And right now, he wants to save us. And he's working on us. We're all works in progress. In progress. But one of these days, he's going to bring out his wrath, but he is the one that's going to do it, and he will judge people for what they did to us because they weren't doing it to us. They were doing it to him. So really, he's going to judge. He's going to judge everything that was everything that was done against us, really, because it was done against the Lord. Okay, but it really, you know, we just submitted ourselves to God and said yes. So therefore, don't be angry at what your brother or sister, or even at what people who, who you work for do to you and say to you, and, and they abuse you and misuse you. Don't be angry because it's, it's not, it's only gonna create a resentment, and, and that's a form of pride, that you're better than them, you know, and even if we are better than them, uh, that's for God, you know, to be, to deal with, okay? Not for us, to bring judgment down, okay? Now, if he tells us, go to a leader of Chicago or something, and you tell them, I'm gonna bring destruction upon the city unless you repent, that's different. God's telling you to do it, he's doing it. But he's gonna use your voice. So remember, we are just a shell, and we have a soul, and he saved us, right? And inside of us is everything of who we are, but his spirit is leading us. His spirit is perfecting us and bringing us to be like him, making us like him, transforming us into his image, into his likeness, to, to become just like Yeshua. Okay, in Yeshua, he said, forgive them, they know not what they do. What did Stephen say as they were stoning him? Lay this not to their charge. And I know God's going to test all of us on this. When people misuse us and abuse us and say nasty things to us, remember, it's not to you they're saying it. It's to, it's to God in you. The light of God inside of you. 
Yehovah bless you and keep you. Yehovah lift up his face upon you and be gracious to you. Yehovah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of our Sar Shalom, our Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, the soon coming king, the word of God returns to bring justice and, and righteousness to the earth. Amen. So, uh, Shabbat Shalom. And we have food. So come and eat, okay? We've got, so have lunch. You've got 10 minutes to eat. No. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat.